so don't expect the normal this morning. Uh, we got several things, but just two or three that I can think of offhand. Most of y'all know that my grandpa, or papa to me, but Mr. Bobby Wallace was in a wreck this week and has been in the hospital. He's home this morning. He's still bruised up a little bit, but he's doing uh, much better as well. Uh, another one, y'all know Miss Pat Tyler, Mr. Paul Tyler. Uh, Mr. Paul has been pretty pretty rough off in the hospital. He's still in the hospital. Uh, let's lift him up in prayer this morning. And I asked him if it'd be all right. We got Mr. Mickey here. He's got these grandchildren here. But uh, his niece, Miss Chrissy Lane, uh, passed away yesterday in an automobile accident. And we really, really, really need to lift up their family in prayer yes. and only to stop the service to do so. Amen. Yes. And just the bottom line is that for Christians, when one of our brothers or sisters in Christ or family hurts, it should affect us. Yes, amen. amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. <coughs> we thank you, Father, for this day and many blessings. Father, there's different things we face in this life that there's nobody to look to but you. There's, we thank God for people, yes, and we want to do our part in prayer this morning. But, Father, we look to you. You are our ever-present help, our refuge in times of trouble as we face things in this life. And we know, that yes, Mr. Mickey, but this family, his sister, this the whole entire family, they're grieving this morning, Father. We thank you right now, Father, as a church, Father, as church family. We undergird them in prayer right now. You said in the Word that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman makes much power available. We know that the Holy Ghost is the strengthener and He's the comforter. And we know that in our times of need and hurt and want, as we look to You and trust You, Father, <clears throat> we know that You're there. You're always there. There can be times in life when we go by how we feel that at the present time we can say, my, 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 what's going on? And I'm all alone. But as we look back, we know that You're with us every step of the way. So, Father, we thank you now. We lift up this whole family. We lift up Brother Mickey this morning. We lift up this husband. We lift up this entire family. We thank you for strengthening them, comforting them now and the days ahead, Father, as they take this journey, Father. We thank you right now that your hand of blessing is upon them, your hand of strength, your hand of comfort, your grace. Your grace, you said, is sufficient as enough. And we thank you, Father, right now. That not only in this prayer, but in anything we can do, even <coughs> physically and naturally, lead us and guide us and help us. And we want to be there for them. And we thank you for your hand upon them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Father, now in everything that's said and done this day, we thank you, Father, for leading us and guiding us. Father, we're nothing without you. And we can do nothing without you. But this morning we look to you. And we trust in you. It's Easter Sunday, but there's lives here. Everybody. There's lives here today. And life is precious. Decisions in our lives we must make. Every one of us in this place. And Father, we pray that everybody in this place has made that decision. To make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of their lives. But you're the one who knows that. We pray everybody's in fellowship, but you're the one who knows that. And Father, we know this morning without you we can do nothing but with you. And as we trust you, all things are possible and believe. This message you give me today is, is not a, what I would say a normal Easter message. We're not preaching what we want. We're preaching your message. So we thank you as we step out and obey you. The Holy Ghost is working in the hearts and lives of these people. And Father, we set our faith now. Believe that they will not leave here like they came. In Jesus' name, that they're going to leave here changed, challenged, and order forever. Never to be the same again. And we're going to give you all the glory, honor, and praise for it all. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You guys can be seated. We love each one of you and appreciate you. All of you. And we'll let you know more things in the coming days as we know. But we have a responsibility. First and foremost, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord God. Right? But secondly, is to love our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. We're to love our brothers and sisters, and love is only known by what? You might not know that. You know it in the natural. You know it. But in the Vines Expository Dictionary about love, it says love's only known by the action that prompts. Amen? Amen? Love will move you. Amen. Love will move you to pray. Love will compel you to pray. Love will uh, compel you to call somebody and let them know. Hey, I'm here for you. Don't know what I can do other than pray, but anything you do, let me know. We'll do it. Amen? <coughs> We're to be known by what? The church. To be known by the way we love one another. Right? 
Go in your Bibles to Luke chapter 15 for me. Luke chapter 15 has been out for several weeks on the Facebook and, you know, I, I gave you a title because the Holy Ghost gave it to me, but he gave me a title, but I didn't have the message you know, what I was going to say until this week. And the title, of course, is Easter, but the title is just the word accepted. And it's got behind it for a purpose, an exclamation point, and then a question mark. Because, you know, in everything in this life, in every decision that you make, especially concerning spiritual things, there's a Godward side and there's a manward side. In other words, what that means, there's God's part and then there's your part. Amen? So you say that makes no sense, an exclamation point, and then a question mark. Well, as far as what God has done already uh, through Jesus Christ for you and I, that we're celebrating today, he's done his part. Yes, God loved amen. us so much, he gave Jesus. Jesus died. He paid the price. He shed his blood. Amen? Yes, he so did. what's the deal with the blood? The life of the bodies and the blood. Yes. There had to be a perfect sacrifice. Amen? And there was no man upon the earth that qualified. But there was a man that was sent from God, or, or Jesus Christ, and he became what? The man became flesh and dwelt among us. Thank God, he paid the price. And then after he died, he took that perfect sacrifice, his blood, and he died for who? You know, I've read this morning, and I, I don't even know that we'll read this scriptures this morning, but in Luke 23 and 24, I just got up this morning, that's what I was reading through and meditating on and thinking about, and, and repeatedly Pilate and Herod, and, and, and even the people, to be honest, they lied, but uh, they, they could find no fault in him for death. What was the reason for that? He didn't die for himself. He died for you, and he died for me, and he died for the whole world, and that's how much he loves us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? There was no fault found in him. I want you to go to Luke chapter 15. So we know, Luke chapter 15, verse 11. We know that he's accepted us. For God so loved the world. The rankest sinner that you can find. That don't have on their Sunday best this morning. That don't is not in church this morning. That is, has never received Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, salvation is available for them now. Amen. Amen. Now. And what we're supposed to do is announce that and pronounce that to the lost, right? So as far as God is saying today, I accept it based on the blood of Jesus, the price has been paid. But the question mark would be this, he's accepted you, will you accept him? Amen? Amen. He's accepted us, but will we accept him? People do not go to heaven or hell based on uh, but one thing. And we could get deeper, I understand that. But for sake of this service this morning... Whether I accept or receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in my life. Amen. Amen. That's what matters. Do I know you? Amen. And we want to know him more every day. Today we're celebrating Easter, which is all about the greatest. It's to me the Bible. And a lot of people see it differently. But I mean, even as you go back and look at the children of Israel, it doesn't matter if they were being rebellious. It doesn't matter when he was endeavoring to correct them and bring them to repentance. And the whole, the whole entire Bible, the Bible is the greatest love story that's ever been told. Amen. Amen. It shows God's love for you. God's love for me. It started out with the children of Israel, but now what? He loves who? For God so loved the world. Amen. Y'all awake this morning? Y'all ready to go? Yes, Amen. Yes. Thank God for redemption. Thank God he was made a curse for you and me. Now we're going to go here and look at the parable of the prodigal son, but, but it also in some other, it's not just about the prodigal son, and some other, uh, another Bible I got, it talks about the compassionate father. I want to look at this this morning, and the reason would be, because the Lord said so, but in Luke 15, verse 11, it says this. Y'all ready to get started? Amen. We're going to do communion and all. We're going to do that at the end of the service. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Now he's got how many sons? Two of them. Now only rightfully so, James. This message from Brother Jeremy is not here this morning. But he had two sons. The first son got a double portion. That's the way it should be. Uh -oh. I'm just uh -oh. <laughs> The first son got a double portion. So if the first son got a double portion, the whole thing, what's left for the other one? There'd be three parts, right? Uh -huh. So he wanted a third of his father's uh, inheritance. And there's a message in here. So y'all listen. I know I've ministered out of this many times. But the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. So 
this this individual's in his teen years and probably single, and he wanted his portion, which would have been one third. Uh, and another thing to note is the father gave it to him. The importance of, of this part, the father doing this, the early Jews warned fathers against breaking up an estate too early. Here the father granted the request. This loving father, and yes, I'm sure corrected this child numerous times as well, but he loved his son. He granted this request even though it was not encouraged. Well, this father, and this is Jesus talking in parables, is just like Father God. And what this shows is how God permits each person to go his own way. Even though it wasn't encouraged with Jewish, Jewish uh, custom tradition, the father gave him, he, he, he answered his request. He gave him his third, his portion of the inheritance, and he let him go. Mm -hmm. Did you know that Father God loves you? Amen. That he is for you? Amen. He's done everything. No matter the state of your life today, God loves you. Yes. That never changes. The individuals today that reject Jesus and say all things about Jesus, God's love never changes. He loves them just like he does you and I. People don't understand that. Because with your natural mind, you can't understand that. And with natural human love, which is really not even close by, it's about opposite of the love of God. Natural human love is fickle. <coughs> what that means is I love you as long as you're doing what I want you to do. Then when you don't do what I want you to do, natural human love don't love you no more. God's not that way. His love is unconditional. That part is true. Amen? His love is unconditional. But God loves us in such a measure, in such a way, that He gives you free will for what purpose? He wants you to choose Him. He's made the way for us to walk. He's made the way. Today, I thank God that this morning, based on the blood of Jesus, that it doesn't matter what I'm facing, it doesn't matter what you're facing, the Bible says today, because of Jesus... He's the high priest of my life, my profession. Because of Jesus, I can boldly go before the throne of grace and get whatever kind of help I need today. i got an answer. I don't have to be crawling around on the floor, so to speak. I don't have to be ashamed. I don't have to be in fear in that sense. I, don't have, I can go boldly to my Father today. Amen? With whatever we need. Amen? Mr. Mickey's at church today, and I didn't plan on saying none of this, but he said I could do it. Today, there's her, but there's a Father. There's the Father, and He's the strengthener, and He's the comforter, God the Holy Ghost. Wherever you're at today in, in life, you may think and feel that you're by yourself, but God is there, and He's available, oh, yes, but He's he accepted you. Will you accept His strength? Will you accept His comfort? Will you? First and foremost, you must accept the main thing, and the main thing is the main one, and that's Jesus, because He's the way, the truth, and the life. But the Father will let people say, why does God, this one and that one and the other, choose to go all these different kind of ways? God allows you to do whatever you desire. Amen. Whatever you desire. Yes. Amen? The only way that my will is in line with God's will is if I make a decision to surrender my will and submit my will to Him. Amen. I don't know about all of y'all, but I've gone the wrong way in my life a lot of times. Amen. It used to bother me for years, and it wasn't nothing to do with Him. That's That's... But Daddy used to say, my Daddy, who was the pastor, he used not every Sunday, but it come up sometimes. He said, I backslid when I was 19 years old and was miserable as the day is long, and, and I got it right with God and made sure I never went that way again. I'd hate to know that I had to count all the times I backslid this morning. I couldn't count all of them. He was talking about that one time, and I was thinking, my God, I backslid more than that yesterday. <laughs> one time. Man, you're doing pretty good. And I couldn't even keep up with mine. And there were many times I caused myself many problems in my life, but the Father's love never changed. Amen? Amen? Yeah. And you said, oh, I go to church all the time. I love you dearly, but just because you go to church, even this church all the time, that don't mean our heart's right. Yes. And God wants all of you. I sat in church and I was rebellious. Mm -hmm. I sat in church and I was in sin. Matter of fact, there was a time at times I was on the front row. Mm -hmm. We can get you a crown up here this morning. We ain't getting you a crown. But we get you a big old royal chair and sit you up here and everything can look good, but that will make it right in your heart. Amen? Amen. What, my, what God's concerned with this morning is matters of the heart. He'll let you go whichever way you want to go, just as this Father did. And you see that. Yes. Amen? Yes. There are those today that you're going your own way, even today. Now this message comes from the Holy Spirit. Because I can preach a, a covenant message and it's not, it's not just 
interesting. It's good. It's what a lot of people don't know. Oh, my Lord Jesus. And when you understand the covenant that we have with the Father that's no longer based on man, as Adam fell, it's now based on Jesus, who will never fall. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's why he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes on his end. He's the mediator. He's the surety of a better covenant based upon better promises. We can preach that way, but God said preach this, so we're going to obey him. Amen? Amen? So there's people here today, and God loves you regardless. And this is the reason for this message, but you need to understand, and I'm just going to tell you in good country terms, it ain't going to get no better until you decide. Amen. Until you decide, this is the way that I'm going. I don't care which way everybody else goes. I love everybody else, but as for me, you know, we say as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, but it starts with me. I choose Jesus. I might can look pretty, sing pretty, dance pretty, or teach Sunday school as good as anybody or think I can. I might can cut the grass, and we appreciate all of you guys. We appreciate everybody. What God's concerned is with this morning more than anything is my heart. Amen. Is every day. Am I choosing Him today? That's what matters. Because if I don't do any of those things with the right heart, they don't get any, they don't get any credit. <coughs> Amen. Amen. God's more concerned with my heart than anything else and your heart than anything else. And the reason God has had me to preach this this morning, and I say it boldly, is because there are people, matter of fact, we could have named the message something else, but it still goes along with it. We could have called it this because this is what the Holy Ghost said. Stop running. Stop running. I ran for years in church, but still running from God. Amen. Stop running because this is the deal. When you run from God and when you run from what He's saying today in your heart, it doesn't matter. We can talk about what you run to and what you trust in as opposed to God. But this is the deal. When you run from God and run from what He's saying in your heart, you say, but pastor, this, that, no. Paul said my determined purpose is but to know Him and the power of His resurrection. We're celebrating Easter today. God is for you. God, think nothing can separate you from the love of God. You've got everything you need today to succeed. Everything. Everything. But one thing about running from God, and I've done it myself uh, numerous times. Thank God I'm running to Him today. But I, and I can tell you, but the harder you run, the harder you try, and the more you go at it running from God, it never gets better. Amen. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse. It's not the way to go. There's only one way for you and I to go. There's only one way for everybody to go under the sound of my voice. And those that are not here, for God so loved the world that he gave Jesus to die. Whoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. The only true life is through Jesus. Amen? Amen? Right. So he's letting go his own way. Where do we stop? Verse, we didn't read far. Verse 12. He divided unto them his living. We're in Luke 15, verse 12, now verse 13. And not many days after, the younger son gathered together. He's doing it quickly. He's excited because of these, this, this path he's going to take. He's doing what? He's doing exactly what he wants to do. So he's excited. Amen? Amen? He did, he, not many days after, the younger son gathered all together together. And I, and I tell you this every time, but this is highlighted in my Bible. Because it's something you want to make sure you're not doing. And took his journey. We don't want to take his journey or our journey or somebody else's journey. The Holy Spirit is the guide. And he testifies not of himself, but of what the Father and the Son speak. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. As God speaks to my heart, my spirit, I'm going to obey. Him. Because the only true life is down his path. But this son took his journey, went into a far country, and did what? And wasted his substance with riotous living. He wasted his substance, this inheritance, that his father gave him. You know, it's going to be a big blast. He wasted his substance with riotous living. You know, Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. Yeah. And that's what he's still doing today. Yeah. Did you know that Satan come to steal, kill, and destroy him? That hadn't changed. Yeah. It's exactly the same thing today. Don't don't uh, just hold your place, but go to Matthew chapter seven real quick. Matthew chapter seven, <clears throat> I believe verse thirteen. Yeah, <clears throat> Matthew seven verse thirteen. If you got a date the Bible that says against wrong choices, there's the little subtitle there. If you don't, it don't matter because <clears throat> the word still says the same. But Matthew seven verse thirteen says, "Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to what." 
that lead it to destruction. So there's a wide way. There's a path. There's a way, and a lot of times it may be what's popular, and it does lead somewhere, but where's it lead? It leads to destruction, Jesus said. And many there be which go in thereat. Verse 14, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So there's two different ways we could go, two different paths we could follow. One of them's broad, one of them's narrow. We want to take the straight and narrow path because it's going to lead to what? It's going to lead to life, everlasting life, the Zoe life of God, the only true life you're ever going to have. Amen? Amen? Go back to Luke chapter 15. We want to make sure. The Bible says, the Bible says this, there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. Amen? I need to consult the director, who's the Holy Spirit of my life. God, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to do? This morning, if you're here, you need to listen to this message. It's going to bear witness with your spirit. And listen, not only what the Spirit of God is saying through the Word of God, but even in my own life, you say, well, I can do what I want to. I'm going to tell you something. And I know you come for a little sweet Easter message. But some of the most ignorant people you'll ever find. They know better. But some of the most ignorant people that you'll ever find, and the most miserable people you'll ever find, have this mentality. I'm going to do what I want, when I want, and why I want, and I don't care what nobody else thinks. Oh, man, you don't want to be around very long. You don't, because they're real. You say, well, I'm here. Well, you need to submit to God. Because that is not how we live. Our lives are to be submitted unto the Father. Amen. Submitted to, unto... You say, the devil wreaking havoc in my life. The Bible says in James 4, 7, if I submit myself to God, that means submitting to God means what? It means I place myself up under His authority. When I place myself up under His authority, when what authority says goes. Amen? And He's the highest authority. Then I can resist the devil and he'll flee. That works together. The Lord told me, he said, the greater that you place yourself under my authority, the greater authority that you have to walk in. Everybody says, well, we all got the same authority. We got the same authority positionally wise has been given us, but we must obey whatever God's saying today. Amen. Amen. And what he's saying to you and how he's speaking to you and what he's been dealing with you about, I don't know. But you do and he does. And I know that if I had two words today to say, and who this is for, I don't know, I will say this and never bat an eye and know that it's God the Holy Spirit. Stop running. Because you're running to destruction. You're not running to good things. You're not running to better things if you're not running to Jesus. <laughs> it's not going to get any better. Amen? Amen? But it can get better. We're not going to go there, but over in John, where is it, chapter 5 or so, he told the fellow that he healed there at the pool. He, what did he tell him? He said, go and sin no more. What did he say? In my life today, it can get two, two things can happen. It can get better or it can get worse. Amen? Amen? It can get better or it can get worse. I can make decisions. It's not just natural. But when I make decisions and I choose Jesus, and I look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. And every single day, I'm laying my life down. See, it's easy to do when you understand the love of God. And when you sit around and you meditate on and you think about Easter and you think about this past Friday and you think about Jesus dying and you think about all that He did for you. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. There's a lot of people say, I can't do this, that, or the other. But when you look at what Jesus has done, he's, yet, he's led the way by example and now equipped and empowered you with his word and spirit. Amen. You can do it. You can overcome. You can make it. Amen. You don't have to be like everybody else and you don't have to be like your family's been if they haven't been people of God. You can be who God's called you to be. God's looking for some people that will say yes to it. Amen. That will choose him today and are willing to break the mold in their families. Willing to break the mold in whatever it is that we could say the curse in any area of your life. Thank God. When we're willing and obedient, we can do the good of the land. Amen? Amen. I'll wait on one of y'all to break out and dance. Y'all ready to go. God's <laughs> good. Amen? Amen? Yes, He is. Where did I stop? 13, 14. Verse 13, 13. And, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living, doing exactly what he wanted to on his journey. Verse 14. Y'all there? Verse 14. And he spent. And when he had spent all. You know it was fun when he had a little bit of money. 
But when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And what happened? He began to be in want. You know, the devil will tell you a lie and keep telling you lies so long as you believe it. But remember whose journey that he took. He took his journey. And Satan's plan will always take you to a far country, to a far place, and it will always take you away from God's plan. Amen? Always. So when he spent all there, when he spent all, there arose a mighty famine. Do you know the devil, God sets you up for success if you obey the Spirit of God. Amen. And Satan sets you up for defeat and failure. Amen. And in, in, in all honesty, when we say, I'm going to do what I want, when I want, and how I want to do it, we are saying, basically, Satan, I give you my life to do what you please. Because he operates through the flesh. I yield to the flesh, do it my way. In all honesty, I'm not doing it my way. I'm pleasing, not Father God. Amen? Who do we want to do? Please. I want to do those things that are pleasing in His sight. You say, nobody's arrived, Pastor. Nobody's arrived. It starts with a decision. That's what we're talking about today. If any Sunday should be decision Sunday, it should be Easter Sunday. Amen? It starts with a decision. We've been lied to in church and said, well, it don't matter. God loves you no matter what. God loves every person in heaven. He loves every person in this room. And He loves every person that's rejected Jesus and gone to hell. His love is available. His love is there. His love is never changing. The Bible even says when we are faithless, He is faithful. Amen? The promises of God are yes and amen. It's done. As far as heaven is concerned, his word is settled. It's my responsibility to get it settled in my life. Amen. He began to be a woman. He went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. Now, this is the result of buying Satan's lies. This is where he ended up. And he couldn't end it up as far as uh, being a Jew, he couldn't end it up in the worst place, feeding the swine, right? So his journey, doing it his way, doing what he wanted to, it ended or resulted in lack, want, and unfulfillment. There's people today that are not complete. They are not, and even Christians, they may be complete in Christ, but I can be a Christian, and Dr. Hagen used to say it this way. He said there's a lot of unbelieving believers, is what he would say. He said, I'm not telling you go to hell. He said, but you're not walking in the best of what God's got for you because you're not walking in the light of the word that you even have at the present time. Amen? i got to do what I know to do. What is it today God's dealing with you about in your heart? What is it today? Maybe there's somebody here today that you've had pressure turned up on every side and maybe you just want to end it all or maybe you just want to run. There's been numerous times in my life I want to go run hide in a cave somewhere if there was one because my God, it had to have been easier. You remember Elijah, where's the first Kings 18? And we always talk about what Elijah did, and he obeyed God with the prophets of Baal. And we remember God sent fire from heaven, but I believe it was in the next chapter over, he sat up under the tree and begged God to let him die. Well, who was that? Was that Jeff Bell chasing him? Yep. Don't get him, right? Yep. <laughs> That's what happened to some of y'all. While I want to chase him, don't get you. Amen. Look to Jesus, he'll help you. Amen. The Bible talks all about those things too. Amen. <laughs> But he wanted to die. But God's saying today, don't run anywhere else because there's no answer anywhere else. The devil wants you to run all these other places and all these other ways and turn to all these other things for your answers. Jesus is your only answer. Amen. There is no other answer. Paul said, I don't come with any other message other than Christ crucified. Amen. And we proved that. And he said, in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Holy Ghost demonstrations. Amen? Manifestation. God wants to show Himself big in our lives. I, I believe, and I do not say this as a statement of doubt and unbelief, but I don't believe anybody in this room, including myself, is living at the place that God wills and desires for us to live, and He's made a way for us to. Yes, amen. I believe He's endeavoring to raise all of us up to the plane of the Word of God. Yes. Amen? Yes. But I'll never rise above the level of my confession. I understand that. Confession brings possession. And I understand that. But I also must understand faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And God operates on the law of faith. Yeah. Amen. I gotta trust him. Trusting him means I look to him. I depend on I'm not looking, I'm not looking. No, I'm trusting him. 
My faith is in him. He said, I can't straighten out this mess. Good. That's the first step to realizing that you need to trust somebody other than yourself. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the fool trusts in himself. Mm -hmm. We trust in God. People say, I know, I know, I know. I say, I don't know, I don't know. I say, Father, I have no idea what to say today. I have no idea what to do. I can't help anybody if you don't help me. If you don't give me what to say. <laughs> there is no impossible situation with God. None. Wherever you're at today in your life, the fact that you're sitting here in this room listening to what I'm saying, or God's saying through me as His vessel, Proves there's hope for you. The fact God's had me to say these things today, you remember. There's so many places you could go. You could go back and look at Jonah. We thank God Jonah. That's another uh, type, shadow, symbol, however you want to say it. Picture of redemption in Jonah. Just those few chapters. The belly of the whale. Jonah ended up there. And thank God. He repented and thank God. God made, that's, that's a picture of God's mercy. Jonah only ended up the belly of the whale because he was instructed by God to go to the people of Nineveh. And instead of running towards God, he didn't want to run that way. He went the way he wanted. He went the other way. And that's where he ended up, was in the belly of the whale. Why did he end up there? Because he disobeyed God. Mm -hmm. But did God, was, he, was God merciful? Yes, will he be merciful with you? Yes. Will he be merciful with me? Yes. Yes, thank you. The Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever yes, and ever you. and ever. As you read through the Old Testament, thank you see you. that repeatedly. <clears throat> so where did we stop this time? What do you say? 15. All right. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, sent him into the fields to feed swine, and he would fain have filled his belly with the us that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, verse 17, when he came to himself. So his, this guy has missed it. Right? He's missed it. He's missed it, and he's lost everything. And now, of course, like the devil always does, he'll say, oh, this is the best way to go. I had a, I had a uh, when it was the Holy Ghost, for sure. And, and, and they obeyed for a little while and then didn't. But I, I, I came to church one Sunday morning, was ministering several years ago. I don't remember if it was Easter or anything. But, but I was ministering on a Sunday morning, and the Holy Ghost said, and just brought this up, and he said, there's somebody here today that you've got two decisions that you need to make. He's bringing it up for a reason right now. He said, you got, no, you got a decision you need to make, and there's two ways you can go. He said, one of them, oh, it looks so good on the outside, and it's got lights and flashing, and so attractive and make you want to go that way. And the other way is just another, just a plain gate. He said, but that's the way the devil operates. He said, if you take that gate or that way that's so flashy and attractive and everything, because you know the devil paint a pretty picture. He said, if you take that way and you go that way, he said, when you get through on the other side, you're going to be surprised because it's the stuff you're waiting on. Because it's not my plan. He said, I didn't tell you to go that way. He said, you're going by what you see. And we walk by faith, not by sight. We're led by the Spirit of God. I don't do what I want to do, and I don't do what everybody else wants me to do. I do what Jesus wants me to do. Right? But he said, if you take the other gate, he said, it's my path. You've got to be led by the Spirit to follow my plan, and you'll be surprised on the other side of that one as well. But it's going to be a good surprise because of the blessing, because of the provision, because of the anointing. And they went right for a little while and they went the wrong way. And I don't hear much about them now. Pray for serving the Lord, but I don't know. Don't go by how things look. Don't go by how things seem. Go by what God's saying in your heart. Amen? Amen. What's he saying today? Some of you guys got started to work in this year. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. For some, it could be today stop running because of the way you've been going. For others, it could be start running. Or get back started again. Yeah. We want to run this race, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9. So we can we're going to run as if we're going to run to obtain the prize, because we are. Amen? Amen. We thank God. We thank God for what Jesus has done. He's accepted you and me. He's give us his all. He's give us his best. Will today you give his give your all? Will you surrender to him? Will you say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way? Verse 17. He came to himself. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? Now, he, just like you and I, he had to realize something. I messed up. I messed up. I missed it. This is wrong. Maybe the Holy Spirit's revealing some things to some of you guys today. You know, you've been thinking about Easter eggs. And he caught you off guard. <laughs> And you've been thinking about eating your chocolate bunny when you got home? You've been thinking about whatever your dinner is? 
Lordy looking for Mackenzie because she wanted a little chocolate bunny and she got her one big enough. I told her before she eats that one, she's going, we're going to make sure she's going to somebody else's house. And she she, she eat that one before we drop her off somewhere else. Eat the whole thing. Me and Mama go on a date with you. I'm just joking. I, never, I would never do that. Forgive me. <laughs> she got enough energy without eating a big chocolate Easter bunny. But maybe you get caught off guard. There's been times I went to church where I wasn't really planning on hearing from the Lord, but He loved me so much He spoke to me anyways. Amen. Amen. Thank God for His love. Amen. Thank God He loves us enough to correct us, to direct us, to instruct us. Amen. Thank God even when we're not listening, sometimes He'll speak through your pastor. He'll speak through people that will love you and yield to the Spirit of God, and He'll say things to you. Amen. 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 Everybody says, well, I can talk to God along. You can, but you have to understand Probably just like me at a time in my life, just like other people, just like you, we could have talked to God, but we weren't talking right. to him. Right. So we had to have other people around us, and thank God he was merciful to do so. He said, how many hired servants? In verse 17, my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. And I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. He recognized what? I have sinned. Verse 19, and he said, and, and am no more worthy. He recognized his state of life, his state of affairs. He recognized the way things were and what he, the mess he had made. He said, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Genuine, honest repentance realizes and says, I have missed it. I have sinned. God help me. I choose your way from this day. Amen. And I just wrote this down because the Holy Spirit said it when I was praying. But there are some people today that you must stop running. You must stop running your way and the way you've been going. You've been running as hard and as you can and are not gaining but losing ground daily. Don't try any longer but surrender and trust your all to God today. It never gets worse with God. You might go through, through some problems. We've had people to say before, well, Pastor, you just don't understand. Everybody's got problems whether you go to church or not. And I said, that's absolutely right. It's true. Everybody's got problems, the Christian and the non-Christian. I say, the only difference is we got the answer. Yeah. And how bad and big is the problem when you got the answer? Yeah. You're you going to be all right. I never told you, neither did God say, you're not going to face some things. But he said, you're my child. He said, I'm your father. I'll take care of you. I'll trust you. But he also said, uh, God is our refuge, I believe in Psalms 46. He said, God is our refuge. A refuge is a place you run to and not from. He's our fortress. He's our strength. Run to God and it does not get worse. You'll have problems, you'll face problems, but you got the answer. There's times I don't know what to do, but thank God because we're running towards God. Say, God, get on your knees. God, what would you have me to do? What do I need to do? Uh, you said if anybody lacks wisdom. So you have, you have all access to God. Amen. But that doesn't mean we've been enjoying the benefits. Amen. Right. But the benefits are available. Yeah. The blood's been shed. The price has been paid. Help is available. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Verse 20, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. You can see this father, even though he didn't chase after him, he let him go his own way. The love was still there. And this father had probably been watching this road every single day, waiting to see, longing for this boy to come home. Longing for this wayward son to come home. Probably been praying every day. I understand this is a parable, but it's in the Bible for a reason to show us and teach us something. Jesus used it to teach us and show us. So he's been longing and he's been waiting. And when he sees his son coming, and as we'll see, this son comes in genuine repentance. He's got his head down. I mean, for sure. He doesn't know how the father's going to receive him, but neither does he care so long as he receives him. Because he's made such a mess, he would rather be in his house as a servant. Amen. Than be where he's been by the decisions that he's made. And sometimes, and sometimes, I want to say this because it'll help you. Sometimes, it's not that you stop loving people. But people have to come to the end of themselves and the end of their road before you or God or anybody can help them. Yes. They have to. And I say that from not just from the word and seeing it as a pastor, from personal experience. As long as you think you can without God, you're not going to try it with God. 
You've got to come to a place and realize, I, I can't. I can't. Not by myself. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Yes, and amen. believe it. That puts their trust in Him. Amen? Mm -hmm. Oh, we've ministered some messages recently along these lines as well that would help you, but we're not going to go back there now. Where did I stop? Verse 20. He ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, Father, I have sinned. What did the Lord say? What did the Father say in 1 John 1 9? Even if I'm sinned as a Christian, he said, If I confess that I sin, God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. People say, oh, I've sinned too bad. God is faithful. Mm -hmm. I've messed up for too long. God is faithful. You might not have been, but God is faithful. Yeah. Amen. Amen? To forgive us and cleanse us of our sins in all unrighteousness. And he said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and thy sight, and no more worthy to be called thy son. So we see it takes action. On the son's part, there needed to be repentance. There needed to be action. He came to himself. There had to be a realization that there is no way but God. There is no way. Hey, he got all out here and doing all these things, but he realized, hey, I had to make a father's house. Amen? Yes, amen. But then we see the father's response. When there's true repentance here, he said, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring him of the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and do what? And be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again. Jesus was dead. He died for us. Now he's alive again and our life is in him. He was lost and now is found. If you're a Christian this morning, you were lost and you've been found. Amen? And they began to be married. Now, I want to make a note of this. This father here, and all these things represent something, but I don't have time to talk about it right now. But he put the ring, he, he gave him, he bring forth the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. What he's basically doing is, this is full recognition, you're back not just as a servant, but you're back as a son. Amen. That's what he's doing. All, all those things mean something you study him out. I studied him out yesterday, but, but you... He's back in the family. What did he have to do? He had to stop going his way. He took his own journey. When he went his own way, you saw that in verse 13, he began to be in want, hungry, miserable, lack. You know why a lot of people are miserable? It's not because God don't love them. It's because they're, they're doing it their way. God doesn't bless our plans. We submit to God and obey Him and follow His path and His plans, and then the blessing of God is there. Yes, amen. amen. When he came back, you notice when he when his journey, he was in war, he was hungry, miserable, there was life. But when he came back to the Father, it says in the last there, he was what? He was married. <coughs> Amen? Go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 14. John chapter 3, verse 14. Thank God that he's for us this morning. And if God be for us, who can be against us? John chapter 3. Verse 14 says this, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life is where? It's in believing in Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, For God sent not His Son into the world, to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be what? Amen. Jesus didn't come to condemn you and I. He didn't come to condemn the world. What did he come for? Amen. The Bible says he came to save the world. From what? Spiritual death and the devil's plan, Satan's plan of death and destruction. Right? Yes, yes. God loved you so much that he gave his only son to die for you. There's no greater gift. We know that and the Bible says so. And I would just ask you today. Will you, if you have it, will you receive that gift today? Go to Romans chapter 10. It says this. Maybe all of you guys are Christians, but I don't know if you are or not. <clears throat> but you do, and, and God does. Romans chapter 10. Verse 9 and 10. See, he's paid the price. Jesus is available. The blood's been shed. 
God the Father received that sacrifice of the blood of Christ for you and I. Amen. <clears throat> and now in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says, if thou, wilt con if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus... And shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead was the same. Now he came to save us, but I got a responsibility in receiving that salvation. I got a responsibility in receiving that salvation. For with the heart of with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So God has done his part and we're celebrating that through Jesus Christ today. But what are you and I to do? Do we have a part to play? If you've never made Jesus Lord and Savior of your life today, that's a decision that you need to make. You can say all day long, well, everything's going to be all right. There's going to be no problems. There's going to be no issues in my life. Is that accurate and is that true? Without Jesus, that's not true. Without Jesus, that's not right. Our life is to be in Christ. You can stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you that you loved us so much today. That you gave Jesus to die so that we could live. And we thank you, Father, today that we don't serve a dead God. We thank you today that he made the price, but on the third day, you raised him from the dead. And the same spirit that raised him from the dead, if we've made him our Lord and Savior, has quickened and made alive our mortal bodies. Today, I want to give you that opportunity if you're here. You say, Pastor, I've never made Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. I'm tired of the way my life has been going. I'm tired of trying to do it on my own. I've been looking here and looking there and looking everywhere. But I see Jesus is the way. I see Jesus is who I need and what He has is what I need. And today, I want to make that decision to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of my life. If that is you here today, I want you to slip your hand up right where you're at. Anybody in the place? Anybody in the place? Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anybody else in this place? Number two. These are the two main altar calls today. And I'm going to tell you what to do in just a second. Number two. You say, Pastor, that message today, and nobody else has to know it, and it doesn't mean what you've been doing, we're not going to ask you. This message today is ministered to me. And I want to today make the decision to run to God. To run to Jesus and not run any other way. Now I know for a fact that I'm in the right place. And if that is you today, I've been in your seat. I've been in your situation in heart and life. That is you today and you say, Pastor, I'm, I'm ready today to stop running any other way but to Jesus, and I want you to pray with me. I want you to slip your hand up right where you're at. Anybody in the place? And there's more than one person. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. We see hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the Word. Thank you for the Spirit of God. Now, if you raise your hand on any of them, I want to pray with you. Come down here. Everybody else, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And if you didn't raise your hand, you still go. Don't matter. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your holy and mighty name. Don't
love you and to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, it's done now. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the hand of God upon my brother. And thank you, Father, see the gifts and calling of God are without repentance and there's different interpretation on that. But I'll tell you this, the Spirit of God saying, there's some areas that you dropped off that it doesn't matter the length of time. Pick it back up. Pick it back up. There's some things God placed in there. Pick it back up. Pick it back up. Don't don't say, well, God can't do this kind of the other, because He can. All things are possible to Him believe. And God doesn't will that we miss it. What happens a lot of times we miss it. It helps us to realize, God, I can't make it without you. I can't live without you. This ain't the life that I want. So God doesn't will that we miss it. We don't need that. But we can learn during those times. And I believe that you've learned. And I believe all the Spirit of God that you know.
reverence God. But we always have issues. This is the way they do it now. Your communion cup, your bread, if you're looking for it, you see it in the top right. Yes, I don't have many fingernails. But there's two. This is all the sanitary thing now because they believe everything's going to kill you. <laughs> so if you work on it, <coughs> you can just pull the top piece off there. Do you see how to do that? If you haven't got it yet, you probably don't. But there's just a film on top of the bread, on top of this, this where you can pull it off. And you can just, you can separate that when you get it, so it'll be easier for you as we go through this. I'm just going to read the scripture, 1 Corinthians 11, 23. <clears throat> Jesus said this, and we, we go back to Matthew, but I like to lose it, use it here. The reason we do this at the end of the service, the majority of the time, because it's important that your heart's right with God. Amen? It's important that your heart is right with God, and we want to do this reverently in taking communion, because what we're doing is remembering what He's done for us. Amen. And what better time to do it than Easter and Christmas, and, and, and we'll not teach on that at this time, but it wouldn't hurt you to, to, to take it at the house. Yourself, you and your wife, your family, it wouldn't hurt you uh, to, to remember daily what God's done for you. 1 Corinthians 11 23 says, Don't take it, gentlemen. Read it first and come back to it. I've received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had, who instituted this? The Lord Jesus. That's why we do it. And when he had given thanks, he break it. Y'all bear don't do it yet. Where are we? If you have, just hold it. But uh when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. What does this piece of, this little wafer represent? It represents the body. It represents the body, which is broken for who? For you. This do, I'm doing this this morning. When I break this bread and pray over, I'm remembering the body that was broken for you and I. Right? Do this in remembrance of me. 25, after the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament. So this might be grape juice in here, but it represents, this cup is the New Testament. What does it represent? It represents the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for you and I. The price that was paid. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. You go further down, you see that a man needs to examine himself. And, and we've done that this morning. You've had opportunity. We've got a brother here. New brother. Yes. In Christ Jesus. Yes. He's my brother. And I, 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 is it Matthew? All right. Brother Philip, all of them tell me that he's tired. Time. I said, I want to call him the right thing. I said, I, he's, he's always just as nice and upbeat and disrespectful as he can be. And I said, Miss Philip, tell, tell me. To, is, he said, I think his name is Matthew, but we call him Tiny. And I said, well, he's my buddy, but I don't know if I should call him Tiny yet. Because the truth about the matter is he's bigger than me, so I want to make sure before I call him Tiny, it's all right with him. But he's a member, not of this RLC, he's a member of the church. Uh, for sure, but he's a member of the body of Christ. Yeah. Amen. Jesus, the Lord and Savior this morning. Amen. Amen. Yes. So he's part of us, but more importantly, he's a child of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. And you are as well. And that's what we're doing this morning. Is remember, several of you guys rededicated your life to God, three or four or five of them. And it's awesome what God is doing. See, God knows what he's doing if we trust him. Amen. Yes. If we look to him, it's amazing. The results you get when you just do it God's way to work the same way in your life. So we see in verse 24 and 25, let's, 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 in verse 24 and 25, do, he says, do this how? In remembrance of me. Verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. We want to remember what he's done for us this morning. Another thing we want to do today and this morning, we want to rejoice about what he's done for yes. us. Yes. Why well, seek you the living among the dead? He didn't just die for us. Thank God he's alive today. Right? Yeah. Thank you, and we already have, but if you go down to 27 and 28, if necessary, we need to repent before we take of communion. It's important that we act reverently, not act, but our reverent this morning, and then we want to be reconciled to God if we missed it in any way, and that comes through repentance. But let's do this. Let's go back to verse 23. 
And I usually do it all at one time, and I know you can do it <clears throat> both ways, but just follow my instructions, and then we're going to pray. I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, what did he do? He broke it. Break the bread. Just, just hold it. He took, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Now, go ahead. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is so good. Yes, he is. Verse 25. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This represents the blood that was shed. The blood that was, that was presented to, to the Heavenly Father by the Lord Jesus Christ is the perfect sacrifice for you and my, me. He had to die and was willing to die so we could live. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Go ahead and drink. I want you to stand to your feet. And we're going to pray. And we need to be reverent, reverential, reverent for these next few minutes. Father, we come to you this morning. And we love you. And we honor you. Father, there's many things going on in life. There's many things that may be going on even today. Many things racing through many minds this morning. But there's none more important than Jesus. There's none more important than what you've done for us this morning. What you've done for us many, many years ago. Yes. But we're celebrating today on Easter. Resurrection Sunday. Father, we thank you for this bread that we have partaken of that represents your body that was broken and given for us. We thank you for those stripes that you bore. Jesus bore. Be beyond recognition for <clears throat> us by his stripes we're healed. The day we can live under righteousness because we thank you for the blood that was shed. There was no man on this earth that qualified as a savior, but you sent your perfect, sinless son who knew no sin. Perfect sacrifice. He came, he lived, and he died for every person in this world and every person in this room. We thank you this morning and we honor you Help us, Holy Spirit, to realize, to have that revelation knowledge of the love of God yes. that has come through Jesus Christ and even that that has now been shed abroad in the heart of every Christian by the Holy Ghost. 